My name is Jonathan Twining and I teach biology and environmental science at Eastern Nazarene College. I'm on a quest to see the world's wild places. From rainforests to vernal pools, the world is my laboratory and I can't wait to explore it with you. Come along with me this time as I explore Costa Rica in Costa Rican Quest. Pura Vida! I'm in a lowland rainforest near Dominical on the Pacific coast of Costa Rica. I've been going out on night hikes with Dr. John Cassell and his student group looking for reptiles and amphibians. As we look carefully along the trail, we start to find lizards in both the leaf litter and on the vegetation. One of the first lizards we find is the common basilisk. Another name given to this creature is the Jesus Christ lizard because of its ability to run on its hind legs across the top of the water at a top speed of just over five miles per hour. It can do this because it has large feet with flaps of skin on the toes that are able to increase the surface area of the foot. That, along with its forward momentum, can propel the lizard across the water's surface for short distances. Unfortunately, we did not get to witness this behavior on our night hikes. Another type of lizard that we encounter frequently is anoles. Here we have captured a lichen anole. Imagine trying to see this anole while it rests on tree bark. This is an excellent example of cryptic coloration or camouflage. Many anoles can be hard to identify, as several species can have a similar appearance. One way that we distinguish anole species is by looking at the size and color of the dewlap. But I can tell you that it's a male. Okay, he's got a very large dewlap. That's a really beautiful color with that blue and red. The dewlap is a fold of skin on the chin that can be extended and retracted as a territorial threat display to other males or when trying to attract a mate. This lichen anole has a bright blue and red dewlap. Another common anole, the jumping anole, has a bright yellow or orange dewlap. Dr. Cassell has located a juvenile green iguana. The green coloration of these juveniles is another excellent example of cryptic coloration or camouflage, allowing them to hide in plain sight on long grass blades. When these become adults, they can attain lengths of around four to six feet. Green iguanas are active during the day and spend much of their time in trees. They are herbivores, meaning they eat mainly vegetation. Adult males have a row of spines on the back and tail. The tail can be used as a weapon against predators, as Doc describes. I don't know if you saw when I grabbed him, but iguanas will use their tail as a whip. They'll lash it back and forth to strike at a, a potential predator. So. Doc demonstrates how it is possible to put a lizard in a hypnotic, sleep-like state by putting it on its back in the palm of your hand and rubbing its head and belly. Don't try this at home unless you know what you're doing. <laughs> During daylight hours, we can see another species of iguana, the black spiny-tailed iguana. This iguana is the fastest known lizard running at speeds of 21 miles per hour. They prefer habitats with trees and rocks. The males may be an orange color during mating season. I come face to face with my first snake in Costa Rica, next on Costa Rican Quest. We just found a beautiful little northern cat-eyed snake climbing this tree. These snakes are active at night and this one is likely searching for its next meal. 
To help them see better in low light conditions, the pupils of these snakes are vertical, like those of a cat. Doc explains that this snake uses mimicry as a defense. Its head is going really triangular. Pretty. Is that mimic? Exactly. So what kind of mimicry? Vipers. It's trying to mimic a viper, but is it malaria? It's basian. Good. Exactly. But he sure does look with that little skinny neck and that flared out head. He His sure head's looks, really pretty. He looks like a viper. pretty viperish. <laughs> but if you looked at his face very close, you see eyeball, you see nostril. Is uh, there but a you pit? don't see a pit. There's no so pit. there's hmm. no it's not a pit viper. Hmm. So But of course you have to get a hold of it and look at it and then you see the pit and it bites you. It's like, whoops, it was a pit. <laughs> and then you've got a problem. Then you have a problem. Cat-eyed snakes are mildly venomous, but not harmful to humans. Interestingly, their fangs are at the rear of their mouth, so they have to chew on their prey to inject the venom. A good place to look for herps at night is around a water hole. Here we are looking for eye shine that might indicate the presence of a caiman. No herp walk would be complete without at least one turtle. Here Doc has found a scorpion mud turtle and points out some of its characteristics. Notice that the plasteron's hinged, right? So it can close up and his plasteron, that's this bottom shell, can close off the back end, but if they're really fat, it's pretty hard to close both ends off. It's like I can suck this end up, but Oh, yeah. A female? I can tell you it's a female yeah. because if it was quiet. a male, it'd be concave. Exactly, so it could fit on top of the, female. the female's carapace. Finally, Doc finds the species that many are waiting to see the spectacled caiman. Crikey, that's a big one. Caimans are related to alligators and crocodiles. They are found in marshes, swamps, and estuaries in the lowlands of Costa Rica. It is reported that they can reach lengths of one to five meters. If you feel his back when you get your chance to hold him, you're going to see it's really, really tough. And those scales are so tough because they actually are impregnated with bone, so they're oh, wow. called osteoderms. So it's got like a bony armor. On the top? Yep. So it's pretty, pretty cool. Is the webbing on their feet, they can use some as they're swimming, but most of the propulsion is this way. Hmm. And the web feet, at least in part, help them as they're walking on the squishy mud, kind of like snowshoes. So not only are the nostrils up top, so this guy can be underwater, and just his eyeballs poking out and his nose to breathe, right? If my finger was water level. But watch what happens to his nostrils from time to time. They close. See that? Yeah, they they close. just close. It's like so yeah, that's another way to shut off water from getting into stuff. So close your nostril, throat flap, even their ears. I don't know if you ever seen a caiman ears. But look at that little hole right there. They can even flap their ears closed. So imagine as a kid, you got built-in nose plugs, ear plugs, swim goggles, fins, everything you need. Mother caimans care for their young, so she is somewhere nearby. The call this young caiman is making is to stay in communication with its mother. She would have brought the juveniles to this water hole to teach them to swim and hunt. Their prey would include crustaceans, insects, and small amphibians, reptiles, and birds. Dakasaw came through on his caiman. Now if we can just round up that Tercia Pello. Mm -hmm. I have to say on this small viewfinder, you look like big country Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> I can take a picture of it. <laughs> Let me get a picture. Chickens. We did encounter one other crocodilian species on our trip through Costa Rica. What's the name of this place? This is Rio Tarcoles. Rio Tarcoles. Okay. Yep. On the way to Palo Verde, we crossed the famous Rio Tarcoles, and from the bridge, we were able to see American crocodiles. Some of these crocodiles are known to have reached 13 to 16 feet in length 
and weigh between 1,000 and 2,000 pounds. You tried going down there? <laughs> this species prefers brackish and coastal waters. Crocodiles have a V-shaped snout, which is narrower than that of the American alligator. I hope you've enjoyed exploring Costa Rica and its biodiversity. I'll see you again next time on Costa Rican Quest. Pura Vida!